back to another episode of Utober or another vlog. Although today's vlog is again another reaction video. I started this last week, last Thursday with a reacting to my 2016 Utober videos and today we are going to be doing 2017. Now, I before we jump in, I want to just like recount from my own memory where I was in fall 2017 and in doing so I'm realizing there was such a jump from fall 2016 to fall 2017 like I went from living in Kingston to being fully established in Toronto. I went from being single to being in a more established relationship. I was living in my first apartment in Toronto, which was a great spot. I loved it. The only thing I didn't like about it was one, that I didn't get direct sun, and two, using the elevator every time Bentley had to use the bathroom. That was definitely a nuisance. But all in all, this was a good year. I will say I do remember this being, like this is probably the most effort I ever put into Utober. And at the same time, how stressed I was, it was not healthy. I was basically doing Utober and at the same time or just before Utober, I had launched Coz, which at the time was more of a merchandise store than it was a brand. Importing all the goods to my apartment, packing them up there and then sending them out myself. Yeah, it was just a stressful, very busy time. I do remember like putting on a really happy, positive face and then having a lot of breakdowns. 2017, when I finally moved away from my hometown, I feel like I was finally given the distance and the space to face a lot of the things that I felt were really making me struggle with my mental health. But, but in order for me to face them, they really had to come to the surface. And so th this part of my life, like it's such a double-edged sword because I was so motivated and I was almost to like a toxic point, so heavily, heavily focused on how my life looked, how I looked, how I presented myself to the point that it became unhealthy. Uh, and I also used certain means as a feeling of control. Like I had, I had almost cut off my entire family at this point. Like I needed space, I needed distance, I needed time. My anxiety was at its peak. My mental health was just, just a below the boiling point at this point. This is where we're at today. This is where we're diving in. It's going to be a fun year, but I'm definitely interested to see because I don't remember exactly what this will look like, but I'll I'll be as honest as I can about what was really going on in the background. So the first video is a fall morning routine. Of course. It's a pretty quote. That's a fun intro. I remember this. I remember being so proud of myself for figuring out how to do that leaf folly thing. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel for today's video. It is officially day one of YouTube. I still have the same voice and the same like, you know, it's almost like a cheerleader. <sighs> the voice, the voice. I can't do it anymore. I can't even get my voice that high anymore. October, which is literally the most exciting news I've had all freaking year. We finally made it. I love this color of my hair though. Like I literally told my hairdresser, this is what I want to try and get back to in terms of the blonde. Such a great color. It, the official countdown is complete. Utober can now commence. If you guys don't remember or know what Utober is, my style actually hasn't changed that much, but my makeup style has changed, I would say. And I love this whole look. It's so pretty. The only thing I wish is just like, I would take the lashes off because it's just a lot for like a very casual day. But you know what? It was fun. It was fun at the time. Utober is a daily video series that I'm going to be doing on my channel. And aside from that, instead of boring you guys any longer, let's jump right in to my fall morning routine. <laughs> like fake eye rub. I mean, it's theatrical. Like that's what this is meant to be, right? Like you're supposed to be displaying what your morning routine is like. So you do have to like reenact it a little bit, but it's just like, that's that bordering line that in today's time, I feel like if I were to film a morning routine, I'd probably film more from like my point of view and just show like, you know, the blankets coming off rather than like filming 
me like fake wake up and rub my eyes. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just like a, I don't know if I, I don't want to call it cringy. I don't like the word cringy, but it's just, it's a different time, I would say. Bentley. I forgot about this. Oh my gosh, I used to do this thing where I would have my phone make me do a math equation in order to get my alarm to turn off so I wouldn't go back to bed. I also loved this bedroom. Oh, I've been here before. Gosh, so much fake tanner. I've seen this writing on the wall. So another just honest moment, I like set up the pillow and the pumpkin and the slippers that way. It's not like I went to bed and left it like that. And all at once I know, just tell the soul and say goodbye to sanity and to grace. Not my intention to be here again. Just understand that this weary man. So something that I've never, I don't think I ever showed it, but the reason why I like struggled so much with the like elevator thing at my apartment, it was such an anxiety thing for me because Bentley was so high anxiety in the city. And if he saw another dog or someone came on the elevator weird, like he was he's just very highly protective of me, which makes sense. It's always been Bentley and I. So every time we were on the elevator, if another dog came on or if someone came on the elevator that he felt was threatening in any kind of way, he would go crazy. And his bark is so high pitched that I would just be like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, but it would be so loud and so stimulating. So every time I'd go to take him to the bathroom, I would be like holding my breath till we finally made it outside. And then it'd be like the same thing all over again, coming back inside, because there were a lot of dogs in my building. It's traveled so far. Pictures and put them on my fridge. It's so cute. Oh, I've been here before. I seen that black stare at the floor. The endless spiral of arguments. You turn around to leave again. Please don't say those words to me. So from 2016 to 2017, not much of my morning routine has changed. Girl is spending another 45 minutes on We Heart It, which again, I am jealous. I am jealous. It was not my intention to be here again. Bentley digging up his bone. Just understand that this weary man has traveled so far. Lovers and one heart is enough to kill a man. No matter how hard he tries, you got deep under my skin, and I still feel your power. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to like share the music in here, but basically I just did like a record scratch from an acoustic song and went straight into like some beats for the workout, which was, I liked that. That was a cool edit. You changed my voice, you locked it in and put out any fire. getting 
so self-conscious worrying that like people would come use the gym and see me filming myself because keep in mind like this was 2017 yeah it was it was six years ago so it wasn't like it was unheard of to be an influencer or to be like filming yourself or making content but it definitely was not the norm that it is today um so i feel like the pendulum has swung far to the other side now where it's almost like you see it a lot whereas at this point i remember being so self-conscious and so afraid to So that's two morning routines, two separate years. And one of the things that I'm noticing is like when I'm eating, I'm on my phone. And that's not unheard of, that's like normal probably for the most part. It's, I even feel like that can sometimes happen today. But I just, I mean, this is motivating and I can fully understand how if I was still in this era of my life, this would be really motivating. But it's also very lonely. Like, and maybe that's just me remembering almost because I was the one that made this. Like I just remember, well, for one, all my mornings definitely didn't look like this. Like it wasn't always this prestige and like perfected, you know, but I don't know. I just feel like I, it's just very lonely. And then I would go about spending probably the rest of my day by myself. And yeah, I mean, it's hard not to get in your own head. It's hard not to struggle with your mental health when you're spending all your time alone, like all of it. My side. I'm sick of being so tired And I can't keep avoiding the cure It feels like my heart's gonna die If I don't run out this door I can't believe what my eyes have seen I just woke up in a broken dream Who can stop my hands from shaking I need you to take them <laughs> It's cute, but it's like God love her. God love her. How to stop caring what people think. How long is this? 11 minutes? Let's do it. I don't know why this one's calling to me. I still care what people think, but like at this point, I really, really cared what people thought. I wonder how. Let's see. Let's let's go into it blind. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Hey, come here, Bentley. Hey. Bentley, don't make me move you. Bentley's currently staring at the window, and there's a dog park in front of my building. Hence the... Hence that. What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. Today is officially day four of Utober and if you guys haven't seen the first three days of Utober, I will link them down below as well as pop them somewhere up on the screen. I've created a full playlist for you guys so you guys can make sure that you're watching every single day from now until the end of October. And it brings- I love my hair and I love the nails. Brings you a new video every single day from now until Halloween. For today's video I'm going to be doing a coffee talk with you guys and the topic of today's coffee talk is how to not care about what people think. Lately I've just been really wanting to break free of the kind of prison that we hold ourselves in when it comes to filtering through our actions, our behaviors, and the things we say based on what we think we're going to be judged for or what we think other people are going to think about it. We have this fear in our heads that if we make the wrong move or we make a decision that people won't agree with, that we're going to be labeled, we're going to be judged. Maybe the thing that we fear people think about us is really something that we secretly fear is a truth about ourselves. We might fear that we won't be accepted. There's so many different things that play into the reason why we start to become these creatures that like lose ourselves because we're so busy trying to appease to everybody else. There's a deeper reason to this though that I can, I could go back in time now and give myself just to fill this in. I mean, over generations and generations, we as human beings have not been able to survive without a tribe. If you don't have a tribe, if you're a lone wolf out in the wild, especially centuries ago, you wouldn't survive. So 
we all have adapted and made it to where we are today by learning how to gauge how other people perceive us and whether or not we're being accepted by the tribe so that we don't die pretty much. How that evolutionary character feature of being a human being has made it into the modern age now where you you don't give the brain, we haven't given our brains or our bodies enough time to really adapt to such a change as technology and social media, now it's become a crutch more than a survival mechanism. Where in a lot of ways, we still do use it as a survival mechanism. We think that like, again, if we can get everybody to like us, if we can just, you know, pay a lot of attention to the way that people think about us, and then we can adapt or move or change in order to make people feel more comfortable or love us more, that again, we will fulfill either the trauma or the voids or the needs within ourselves. And it's an easy trap to get lost in, but I definitely think that there is like an evolutionary reason why we care so much what people think. And it's just learning how to use the cognitive ability or, or the intellect that we all have to consciously bring that up to the surface when we're not truly being ourselves. And I mean, there's also a time and place. Everybody gets a different side of you, right? So. Yeah. And this comes from a long history of anytime you've been bullied, anytime you've been ridiculed, anytime you've been made fun of, anytime you haven't been accepted or something you've done has kind of resulted in people shutting you out or maybe people not being so happy with you, this deeply ingrained into your subconscious as every time I make a decision to do something different, I will become an outcast or I will become unhappy. And so every single time you've done something different or every single time you've maybe come into conflict with someone who didn't agree with you or maybe wasn't fond of you, it deeply ingrained this truth inside your head that you can't be who you are because it might mean other people won't like you. All different because I just realized it's, it's Valentina in the background. Like, it's yourself, is it something that you are doing wrong or is there something going on in this person's life or some sort of insecurity that might be causing this person to think or behave this way? Pity them because if you pity them, then it gives you the power back. Never, ever, ever fall prey to other people's insecurities. Number three. I, oh, that was a little petty. I literally went to straight, like, pity the person that, you know, that bullies you. And honestly, it's kind of true. If you try to do something that's different and you, and you being authentically you, and someone makes fun of you for it, pity that person, because there's clearly something going on in them that's making them needing to bully other people. It does create that power shift, especially in your own mind. However, pity, I feel like instead, and this could be, wow. This is, this is opening up something inside of me because this could also just be my own trauma response that I would want to go to empathy or, or more so sympathy, not empathy, but sympathy for like, like, I hope you're okay for whatever reason you clearly need to bully other people. Um, and sympathy and pity are almost like cousins, you know, but I feel like pity almost feeds the ego a little bit, whereas sympathy, it's a bit more of a grounding perspective. But I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that because I don't necessarily disagree. I just think lean into recipes of disaster. Coming back to like what you think you attract, if you're pitying other people, you might attract pity for yourself. I don't know. That's a tough one. Anyway, I'm going to jump to another video because we're only two videos in. I feel like this is already a really long video. My life isn't perfect. I'm pretty sure this is a San Francisco vlog. Spree. I want to get to know me every little inch of me. Gentle while you stroke, will you depict me? Every number count. I actually totally forgot about this trip. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Today is, I don't even know what day of Utober today is. So I'm about to go downstairs and actually meet with Alana. If you guys remember her, we went to Europe together. She was in a bunch of my vlogs. I'm gonna go meet her downstairs as soon as my luggage gets here. We are going to grab some food. Benefit actually put us up in the Ritz Carlton in San Francisco and it is like the most beautiful room ever. We have- Mm, I'm struggling with the fact that I titled this My Life Isn't Perfect and then I'm like, hey guys, I'm in Ben I'm in Benefit. I'm in San Francisco with Benefit with all these influencers in the Ritz Carlton of like and in the most beautiful hotel. Like I don't know, is this I really hope that this isn't as out of touch out of touch as it's 
seeming so far. And let the San Francisco vlog begin. I do you Sorry, and then followed it up with B-roll of all the free stuff I got. Ugh, this is hurting a little bit. <laughs> I don't think she wanted to be vlogged there. This is again, like this is where I, I very much struggled vlogging in public. And I always thought going on these trips with other influencers, you could just vlog, right? But it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. Also, the dynamic with Elena and I, in like all honesty, we we got on, like we were friends, but there was also like some weirdness, and that kind of came to a head. We had gone to a trip this that year. It would have been earlier that year, yeah. So this is after that. Wow, my brain is just like pew pew pew. So I met Elena. She was a fellow Canadian influencer. I met her in the spring of 2017 at Coachella with Carissa and Elena and I like we got on really well like we had so much fun at Coachella that we decided to plan a little Europe trip together and again very fun but very very different. She's hilarious and so fun to hang out with but when we went to Europe I had a really 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 bad panic attack and it got awkward for me. I like it was one of those panic attacks where you know you need to like get out. You need to like leave be outside. You know, like the anxiety hangovers. And then on top of that, I felt bad and then it was awkward. She had lost her wallet when we were in Paris and like things just kind of didn't go the way we planned. And I'm pretty sure this is like our first time hanging out after that. Call me Christopher Columbus. Cause I know you're across the room So I'm a drink till I float And I'll find a way to discover Your body talk like Tova Speak to me like ooh la Let that rap expand like yo yo Oh no, here we go Sex, drugs, rock The wave Hey guys, so it's officially day one In San Francisco, I just got ready um, I'll give you guys all the outfit details down below. I'm supposed to meet everyone downstairs. I think we're heading for breakfast and then today is like a tour of San Francisco, which is really cool. We're finding out like where Benefit originated. All that fun stuff. I'm like out of breath. Holy moly. Thought I'd update you guys. I didn't vlog too much last night, but today is going to be really cool. So we're going to cut to some sick b-roll in a second and some really dope music. Start with some breakfast and coffee and tour San Francisco. I got a weird nostalgic feeling when I watched videos like this because it's such a different time in my life. And... Yeah, again, like I, I'm glad that I did these things. I'm glad I lived it up. But it's still, I like again, even even now when I watch it, I'm just like, it's just, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Casual full view of San Francisco. And then this was the vintage place. I got my favorite jean jacket that I still love. It's still my favorite jacket today. Both of these jackets, that orange jacket, my jean jacket, still my favorite. Both my favorites. Good morning, guys. So it is officially Friday. It's the last day of the trip. I'm getting picked up in about 40 minutes to head to the airport and head home. I just got a cappuccino delivered to my room, an almond milk cappuccino. It's so freaking good. It's weird because I honestly had so much fun on this trip. And something you guys might not know though from the vlog is that like two out of the four days we've been here were super weird, like anxious for me. I wasn't gonna talk about it and then I figured I would just to let you guys know that like take everything with a grain of salt. Like you guys just watch this whole vlog and everything is so happy and fine and dandy and trust me, it was. Like I had the best time. But what you don't see a lot of the times is like the one day when we were getting the tour like I had the most random panic attack out of nowhere or like last oh my gosh I remember that oh my gosh I remember that I wish I could go back and hug me oh my gosh wow yeah we were getting this tour of like the benefit warehouse and I had to like get up in the middle of this presentation and go outside and like breathe outside. And I remember one of the girls that was running this trip, she was so nice. She came out and she like double checked that I was okay. And I was just like, yeah, I just can't breathe. And I, again, I just remember being so embarrassed. And like, I think that actually made it so that the panic attack lingered longer. Oh my gosh, I remember that. And I just, I, that was something I completely forgot about, but wow, that just like, triggered a memory. Last night I woke up like beating sweat with my heart pounding and it's just like there's literally no reason for it. Physically I'm anxious but like mentally I don't feel anxious. It's the weirdest thing but I just thought I'd tell you guys just because I feel like it, 
you can get sucked into this wormhole, especially on YouTube, of watching people's lives and thinking like, wow, they seem like they've got it all put together, like they're going on these trips, they're doing all these crazy amazing things, and like, why don't they feel anxious? Why don't they feel like sad? Why don't they get panic attacks? Why don't whatever? And it's just like not the case. Um, and it especially sucks when it happens when you're not at home and you're not around the people that like you love. But it's also like one of those, one of those things that I another thing I just like sprinkled in there as well. Um, again, much love to my relationship at this time, but that was also like a bone to pick between that, that relationship too, because again, the person I was dating didn't understand my anxiety either. And so when I would have panic attacks, which this was a very common thing in this time in my life, uh, I remember that being a really, really big issue because I would feel really judged and not any fault to him at the time either. Like, again, we were young, he hadn't experienced that before. So yeah, I just remember that being another thing as well. I've honestly, am so used to it at this point that like I'm really good at navigating when it happens. Like I don't beat myself up for it anymore. I don't ask why anymore. I'm just like, oh, this is just how I'm feeling. And I mean, let's just work through it and you know, continue on. I guess we'll pack it on in and let's head on back. Okay, to so now that we've ended the vlog, I will have to say that I still feel like I get, I get why I was naming it and trying to create this like this this message of okay like look at this really cool vlog I just had and like well all the cool things I just did but just so you know like I had some panic attacks like my life isn't perfect I still in hindsight I think that that was out of touch only because I mean it comes back to the Vegas vlog from 2016 too it's like this is not a normal thing for the average person to just be able to like get a full expense trip paid to do things that aren't available to the public and to get all of these free things when you're already making good money on the internet. And it's just like, ah, uh, to kind of wrap it up with the messaging, my life isn't perfect and not make it like San Francisco vlog, like with an anxiety attack or something like that. I just feel like it's, uh, I had no idea how good I had it then. And I, maybe I did to a certain extent. And maybe that's where part of my anxiety came from. Like, I think a lot of it really was imposter syndrome and feeling even there, even still like, like I just couldn't seem to mesh with these cliques of girls and just like feeling like I didn't belong. And look, again, looking back, I'm like, girl, you were so cool. Like just own it. But it's, it's just, yeah, it's just so interesting to think back in hindsight and just be like, just like, oh, can you not, do you not wish you could sometimes go back to your youth and be like, just enjoy it. It's like, I know that I couldn't just reverse my anxiety. There were things I had to work through, but like your life might not be perfect. However, it's real damn good compared to like what it even was versus what like the average 23 year old is struggling with. So it's just, I was 23 at that time, by the way. That's why I said that. Oh, this was like hardcore during the girl boss era, like five girl boss habits. Oof, that didn't age well. Okay, last one. Let's watch some Halloween costumes just because I feel like that'll put us in a festive mood. Last minute DIY costumes, quick and easy. It's so when I dressed up as Bentley. We find ourselves starting from scratch, brick by brick. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to my channel for the 26th. The Bentley got I'm wearing the same sweater. Oh, this was my Bentley sweater. Wait, why do I love that? I'm always going to call this my Bentley sweater now. The day of Utober. It is currently Thursday. And for those of you guys that might be heading out to some last minute Halloween parties this weekend, which literally actually happened to me, today's video is going to be a bunch of last minute Halloween costumes that you can throw together on the spot in case spur of the moment you decide to say adios to scary movies and popcorn and actually attend an event. That said, for those of you guys that are just going to stay home and watch Halloween movies and eat popcorn, you can you can still dress up. In fact, I've done it every year until now. Really quick, if you guys aren't following me already, be sure to check out my Twitter and my Instagram where you may have seen this prior to have seen it in this video. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you guys know whenever a video goes up. And aside from that, if you guys want to know some fast and easy last minute Halloween costumes, then just keep watching. No path carved out for us now. The brush is so what is this, Sleepy Girl? Bedhead, okay. 
I like again I was very self-conscious at this time in my life so I would like pound on the lashes right and I honestly it's it's kind of a vibe every time I wore lashes that looks gorgeous but like I was 23 why am I putting on so much foundation my skin wasn't bad at that time my skin's like a lot worse now but chill chill I think it's because I've always had discoloration a lot of redness in my skin and so I think maybe I'm trying to get myself to like have a blank slate to just like you were so young. I wish I knew then what I know now. Throw on some slippers, specifically ones that you could potentially wear out of the house. And then you can put an eye mask around your head just so, you know, it kind of like completes the look. And if you do decide to drink that night, you could always drink out of a mug too, just to complete the whole costume. That's actually kind of a vibe. Did you imagine you just get to wear your pajamas out and drink out of a mug all night? Is this basic girl? Basic chick, okay. Pretty much me. Like, it's so funny. Again, I, I do still stand by the coffee talk of like, be yourself, be authentically you. But I was like the most basic at this time in my life. The next costume that I threw together was just a basic chick. So all I did for this was the exact same makeup as before. Only this time I added lashes just to make it a little bit more extra. This costume could go so many different ways like you could definitely wear all different types of clothing i decided to put on a pink adidas hoodie some pink leggings from victoria's secret and then you could wear like hunter boots you could wear sneakers you could do ugg style boots carry around like a starbucks mug carry around a small like stuffed puppy there's so many different ways you could do this but i just thought it'd be a funny little um costume to do plus it's kind of like low-key roasting myself because i am actually quite basic See, I love I had the self-awareness at least. I'm still basic, it's fine. And if all else fails on your last minute Halloween costume, why not just, you know, go ahead and be your dog? So again- I actually love this video. I love this video, this is so cute. Like, these are fun last minute costumes. Be your dog, yes, be your dog for Halloween. And then I did dead. Look at how dead I look. What else did I do? Oh, that was so cute. So my final thoughts. First of all, I'm sorry if this ended up being a really long video because going through old videos is like, it's it's weird, it's still weird to me. There was so much effort put into this year of Utober and it comes across. It makes a lot of sense because again, I mentioned this in one of the videos, but at that time in my life, like all of the editing and the filming and everything I'm doing, I'm spending all my days alone just solely doing this. And I said that in 2016 too, that's what brought me to even starting Utober. But at this point I was like, I was starting to date and I hadn't actually met Larissa yet. I was about to meet Larissa a couple months after that, but like I didn't have a whole lot of friends in Toronto. I didn't feel fulfilled, that's what it is. It's like I was doing so much and still left feeling so empty and that was such a struggle for me at this time in my life and it's you don't really get that through a screen especially if I don't actually say it which I'm sure I do in bits and pieces and like even just picking up on the anxiety thing like there was something clearly off and so it's really cool and really healing in a way to go back in time again I'm leaving this feeling inspired I'm leaving this feeling grateful for my younger self because I see her struggle and like I see her passion and there are parts of me from watching this that I mourn and I grieve because they're gone. But then there's also parts of me that I'm just like, I'm very proud of in a very non-corny way, although it does, it's corny, but like I am proud that I did the work and I got to a place where I could be more grounded within myself and really got to a place in my life that I, I was always aiming for. I just took a detour to the city and became an influencer and like ended up here. Let me know if you've seen any of the videos that we watched today and where were you in 2017? What were you doing? What was going on in your life? I would love to hear how things have changed for you since that time. I will see you guys either way very soon and until then. Thank you.